Ready, Kevin? Technically, this is your dinner, FYI. Well, bakers, I feel like we had a really good thing going with sourdough during quarantine, but how is your starter doing right now? Is it still alive? Is it stuck in the back of your fridge and has a boozy layer on top and you're afraid to look at it and then you shove it back even further? Well, don't do that. Take it out. We can bring it back to life and I'm going to show you how you can use it to make the most incredible Neapolitan sourdough pizza. You'll never have to leave your house ever again. You're just going to want to stay home and eat pizza. And as always, the recipe can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com. And we have Zach behind the camera and we have Kevin and Georgie over here in the corner. So obviously this isn't George. He's taking a nap right now, but stay tuned because he will be back. <laughs> Baby George is looking good. Okay, so for this recipe, you want to start out with our starter. Now, my starter is lovely and healthy. I fed it yesterday. It is looking great. All right, Jim, admit it. You don't always feed your starter. Okay, so I don't always feed my starter. And one time I left it for five weeks without feeding it. But that was because I had a baby. So the thing about it is, it's really easy to bring it back to life. And I've got all that information on my website. So the first ingredient we need is our sourdough. And we are just going to add him into our bowl. Now what you want to do is feed him again, feed him what you just took out and then pop him back into the fridge. Into this, I am going to add in some warm water, water that's kind of blood temperature, and then a little bit of olive oil. I like olive oil in pizza dough, it just makes the dough kind of soft. And then with a whisk, just whisk these together. Now, this is important. Come here to me, I want you to listen to this. I want you to use bread flour for your pizza because it makes it chewy, it makes it stronger, it just gives it a better structure. So please use bread flour. Now I'm gonna get questions, can I use all-purpose flour? Yes, you can, but you don't get that same bite and chew with all-purpose flour that you get from bread flour. So I'm gonna recommend this, and you guys are gonna to listen to me. So add in your flour, and then on top of that, add in a little bit of salt. And then with a wooden spoon, just mix these all together. Now this dough is a saggy kind of a dough. It's a wet dough, so don't worry. It's not going to clean the bowl like I normally say. Once it all comes together, just scrape down the sides of the bowl with a spatula. I'm gonna cover it up, use cling wrap or use a shower cap. These are great because they're reusable and also no air can get through them, so they're fantastic for proofing bread. Put your shower cap on, and now what we're gonna do is leave this for 30 minutes. We're gonna let it rest, relax, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna start our next stage. It's really easy. So our dough has been resting now for 30 minutes. This is the point where we fold it. Now, this is a really simple technique. What you do is wet your hand a little bit, because it can get kind of sticky. And then we're gonna go into the bowl. We're going to pull the dough away from itself and then fold it over on itself. Turn your bowl, pull, fold. You do this the whole way around, so four times. That has come a full circle. So what you want to do now is repeat this another six to eight times or so, folding and pulling the whole way around. And if your hand gets a little bit sticky, wet it again. Gemma, what's the benefit of folding the dough? So that's a really good question, Kevin. We fold because it gives strength to our bread. It strengthens the gluten and it also will develop these lovely air pockets. So we're folding in air, we're stretching it, we're making it stronger. So now, here's what we're gonna do. Put back on your hat. Now we are going to repeat this process another three more times. So for another half an hour, you're going to let it rest fold, half hour rest, fold, half hour rest, fold, you know the deal. So um, you'll notice over time that as you stretch your dough, it'll strengthen and become really pliable. That's when you know it's almost ready. So our folding and our stretching is done. Now we're gonna leave our dough out at room temperature for roughly three to four hours. Then we're going to divide our dough evenly into three pieces, and then we're gonna put those pieces into their own oiled little tubs. Then what we're gonna do is pop that dough into the fridge, and you want to leave it in there for 24 hours. At this time, the flavor will develop, the bubbles will grow even bigger, and it will just make for a nicer dough. Now, I know I've thrown a lot at you, it's a lot of steps, but believe me, it's really worth it. I've tried other sourdough recipes, and I haven't nearly gotten as good results as this one. So Gemma, at this stage, can you freeze the dough? So actually, that's a really good question, Kevin. Can you freeze the dough? And at this stage, after the 24 hour resting period, yes, you can freeze the dough, and it bakes up beautifully after. But I've got one ready to go, so let's make some pizza. So bring in a piece of parchment paper because we're going to roll our pizza out on that. 
and we're going to dust it with a little bit of semolina or you can use just regular flour and then what you want to do is turn out your dough and then stretch it to around a nine inch size pizza go a little bit bigger if you want but this will give you a nice thick crust and a thin base so you'll notice that the dough is really pliable and gorgeous you're going to love working with it okay gorgeous now decorate your pizza however you would like i'm going to go sauce cheese and then simply a little bit of homemade pesto. So the point of the parchment is so we can slide it easily into the oven. So just go ahead and cut down your piece of parchment if it's too big, because if it's too big, it might burn in the oven. Then we're gonna take out a tray, slide it onto that. My oven is at 550 degrees. Go as hot as your oven will go. Sometimes that's only 500 degrees, that's totally fine. You want to slide this bad boy in there when it's nice and hot and then close that door. I am delighted with how this turned out. As you can see, the crust really popped and that's what you get with the classic kind of sourdough Neapolitan pizza. You get that lovely bubbly crust. Oh my gosh, it's absolutely gorgeous. So Kevin, come on in. I am ready. There you go. And I told you George would be back. Be careful, it's hot. Oh man. Oh, it's bubbly. The great thing about sourdough is that it's nice and soft, so you get a really good chew, and that's from using the bread flour as well. There's so much flavor packed in this. Jem, no more delivery for us. Nope. Absolutely yummy. You're going to love this one. Recipes on the website, and we'll see you back here again really soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Good night, Georgie, huh? Very soon. I promise. Very soon. Oh, my gosh, it's so good.